In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a very simple sound, starting with a sine wave, and build it up using FM synthesis techniques until you achieve this. Now naturally, that is not all just FM. But no, no sounds are just one thing or another. This does use heavy uh, modulation effects and filtering on the hydrosynth, since that's what it's for. So let's get back to FM for a second. It all started with a sine wave, the carrier wave. Then another wave was added to it, the modulating wave. We'll do that right now by turning up the depth of the FM. We're starting to apply it. You can see the wave transform. Now in this particular case, the modulating wave was at a ratio of 2 to 1 compared to the frequency of the carrier wave. That creates nice, pleasing tones. Now if I change that, we change the nature of the modulation dramatically. You hear how every now and then we hit a regular tone, a pure ratio. Now some of these, when you're really close, they produce an interesting effect, as you can hear. You can hear the chorusing effect. That's one of the things you can do with that film. You can do chorus without chorus effects. There's some other interesting things you can do. You can do a sweep. So by turning the depth down, or turning it up, you can replicate a filter sweep without a filter. You can also introduce feedback. This is a, a newer thing. If you introduce too much, you're just going to create noise. but a little bit, you know, get some edge to the sound. And these all work together. Which makes FM synthesis a very complicated technique. In this case, I'm just using a single operator an operator is a combination of a carrier and a modulator. And that's a, you know, that's a pretty good sound for that simple an effect. Oh, let me show you something here. You might notice I'm hitting the shift key. That's so I can jump through the harmonics on the ratio. The harmonics being um, quarter, half, and then whole number multiples of the carrier frequency. They go up pretty high.
Ratio sweeps are kind of interesting too, by the way. Now, FM started in the late 60s. It really hit it big in the early 80s with the Yamaha DX7. And then it kind of hit its peak with a synthesizer called the FS1R. Peak in complexity. Um, and it also makes great sounds, don't get me wrong. It's not just a peak in complexity. But my point in bringing that up is, quite simply, it's 40 years of information on how to program FM synthesizers. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use the well-known algorithms that Yamaha developed for their DX synthesizers and including the FS1R. Now the FS1R um, has more FM capabilities in some areas than the Hydrosynth and uh, less in others. Uh, for example, uh, it could handle uh, eight different waveforms for the FM waves, where the hydrosynth can apply 219. Uh, a Yamaha DX7 could only use sine waves. So if we give this a listen, we'll switch to a triangle now as the modulator thing source. Not a big difference at these settings. Other places. On the spectrum of FM sounds, might have bigger differences in the output. Now you could also change the carrier wave. And as I said before, you can use any of them in the hydrosynth. Admittedly, they're not all that uh, musically useful, but may have some other interesting purposes. got to really experiment with FM. There we have a ratio just above two. That sounds like an LFO, but the LFOs are not being applied. I do have the mod matrix set up right now, but everything is set to zero. Just a few things are in it at all. So you're hearing LFO created by a non-integer ratio of the modulating to the carrier frequency. Just another treat that FM has for you. So back to the notion of algorithms. There's a lot of them. Um, there are like 32 in a DX7 and something like a hundred combinations uh, of the operators in an FS1R. It's because it was an eight operator synthesizer. Now, as I mentioned before, an operator is a carrier modulator pair. Um, you can apply FM on the hydrosynth to two oscillators. But there's two different modulators that can be applied. So, how many operators is that? Well, it's, it's just different. 
but we're going to check out what they can do. Now, just save where we are right now. I'm going to take a look at my, my more sophisticated patch, or what we're headed to. What I've done in it is I'm just using two mutants, but I am using three oscillators. The mutants are just using basic waveforms that they have built into them, but they can use more. They can use the other mutants, so you can chain them together, and they can use uh, the other oscillators. So again, this gets complicated rapidly. Uh, you want to make small changes, you want to listen to your changes as you go. So, back to this design of this patch. We've got mutant 1 is set up. Triangle, that's fine. We'll take a look at mutant 2. It's also set up, but we haven't fed these into the mixer. So let's do that now. So we're going to turn off 1 and bring up 2, just so we can hear what it's sounding like. Okay, so we've got a very pure tone there. We'll bring up oscillator 1. Now we're going to go back and take a look at this other patch. Three point zero six two. Okay. So let's set that. Because as I said, we're trying to get to the other patch. I'm just taking you there. So one of these is slightly off. Three point zero six two. We're getting some some little dissonant action there, but we expected that. Now, oscillator 3, I said it was also in the mix, so we're going to bring it up now. Now it is set, it's going to sound lower. We've got some things going on here. So once again, 100% mutant 1, 100% from mutant 3. You notice I'm not using mutants 2 and 4. Um, so far in my exploration I haven't found them to be all that useful at creating anything particularly new. Um, they may make some crazy sounds, but I'm just trying to as I said from the beginning, to emulate what you can do um, with the hydrosynth by applying the old knowledge, the old algorithms developed for the Yamaha synthesizers to it. Those are excellent starting points. That's really the whole emphasis here is to have you be thinking about those starting points. Now, in the complex sound we were hearing before, the oscillators, other than three, are set on a sine wave. Um, number two is slightly detuned. So we'll go back and make sure that I've got that same setup. So, sine wave, sine wave, slightly detuned, and a square wave. Okay. And you can tell there's no, uh, there's nothing special or particularly anything going on with the envelopes at the moment, but we'll we'll be fixing that. So let's take a look at the mixers. Okay, so 
Right now we're just using one filter. This is where um, you get to start really taking off with what you can do uh, with the hydrosynth. Now we're going to apply some envelope. Okay. Now my envelopes, because this is a, a pad, uh, they're slow attack, slow release, pretty high sustain. Put in a little velocity effect. To save this, we're going to take a look at the uh, the depth parameters in the other patch. The depth meaning how much FM is being applied. Okay, 41.4 and 32.1. Okay. Will I get it? Will I hit 41.4? Yeah, actually I actually did. 32.1, okay. We're going to take a look at the mix levels. As we get closer and closer to the other sound. So you all the things that feed into it. 90s, 90s, 84. And a ring mod, okay. So we're... We're using everything. This really is just going to make it louder, right? It's not going to change much. Now, ring mod, though, is pretty interesting. We have it up loud in this because it wasn't doing a whole lot. So now we're getting somewhere with this sound. Time to start applying the modulations. So one of the key pieces of the puzzle for an FM operator is that you have apply an envelope to a modulator. And since we've got five envelopes on the hydrosynth, it's easy to use these extra envelopes to affect mutant parameters. So we're just going to dial some up. I'm not really paying attention to the values right now. We'll just give it a listen. Oh, there's some interesting things going on there now. So we've dialed up an LFO. We've dialed up some feedback on the mutant. An LFO on the depth on the mutant. And an envelope on the uh, depth. So envelope 3, for those keeping score, it's controlling mutant 1 depth and mutant 1 feedback. Now I want to take a look, make sure I've got everything else looking good. Pretty close. Pretty, pretty close to everything right now. So we're going to take a, another sneak peek at the mod matrix. I've been playing around with this one. Um, there's little depth of feedback at the moment. Three, but mutant one has a lot of 
depth control. From the envelope. Um, that's the that's part of the sweep that you hear. Obviously the part of the sweep is from the, the regular filters, but it's being contributed to by the mutant on the in the mod matrix from the envelope. So I'm going to turn that one up to match. Turn these others down a little bit because they're pretty low. So let's give it a listen. you with an FM patch listen particularly the extremes because you can get crazy artifacting going on. I mean up here at the high extreme very little is happening. You don't hear all the uh, nicer effects that were going on at the lower octaves. So you get a feel for where this is an effective sound. So that's pretty good. So to to really to summarize, um, we've taken the concept of a algorithm from one of the Yamaha synthesizers. In this case, uh, it's parallel operations. So we have the two oscillators. Each oscillator is being affected by one modulator. I am using slightly different uh, input sources. Actually, I wonder if I should put this one the sign. Let's see what that does. Not a big change. You'll notice that with a lot of these patches, uh, some things you may be doing are overly complicated and you need to really assess um, was that last tweak meaningful? Did it change anything in the patch noticeably? Really? Or not? Um, something, to, uh, something to consider. So, one one modulator, one mutant modulator for each oscillator, and then a third oscillator brought in uh, just to round out, thicken the sound up using a square wave to complement the FM modulated sine waves of the other two oscillators. Then you apply your typical low frequency oscillators and envelopes, but you need to add envelope control to the mutants. Uh, you will get uh, much more interesting sounds. And then adding LFO uh, to the mutants as well. is another good thing to do. And you can actually add quite a bit.
there, you can hear it now. Now, I just cranked up the feedback. Now this thing's practically talking. Let's hear it in a lower octave. So what you're hearing right now is uh, that the FM sounds can produce a lot of randomness. Uh, some extra interesting tones that you would never anticipate. That are noisy, but they're not noise. They've got a, a better sound to them than basic noise does. Now I'm turning on a couple more things here. These are the finishing touches on the, uh, the sound by putting in the chorus and the reverb. Now it's got that spaciousness that you heard. So there's a hundred other algorithms. They're great places to start in creating your patches. Uh, they will give you lots of clues, like putting feedback on the mutant, uh, adjusting uh, the depth to create a sweep, adjusting the ratio to create an LFO or to create a chorusing effect. Um, some other interesting things you can do by modifying the tuning. You can also, of course, modify the fine tuning. Key tracking on FM, that might be a problem. I don't know if I'd suggest that. But you know what? You can create whatever sounds you like. Just know what they're going to do to you. Know what that impact's going to be. Yeah, I had the filter fully open. So I wasn't shaping the sounds earlier. So my filter envelope was not doing anything. There you have it. That's a pretty rich sound. So I encourage you to go and look at the algorithms, figure out how to apply them. You can create stacks. You can have each of the mutants feeding the other mutants and then feeding the oscillator. You can have two mutants feeding one oscillator. You can have the oscillators feeding the mutants so that you can create a, additional feedback loops not possible on the other synthesizers. Um, some of these things, they may not bear much fruit. So you've got to, you know, uh, just listen carefully as you go to see if they're really making a, a change. Uh, one of the interesting things you can do is uh, apply wave scanning, wave tables. 
because again, this is a hydrosynth. So get out there, make some music.